Hi and welcome back. I hope you uh, have got started with your little row of chains and stitches. Now we're going to learn how to turn corners and turn them into usable products. So in this session I'm going to teach you how to make little mug cozies or little plant cozies and then you could actually continue to make it a little bit longer and make a headband or even make it a little bit wider and make a scarf. If you're feeling really adventurous you could even have a really long chain and start to create your very first blanket. But basically, we're going to be learning about doing straight line crochet and, and the corners. And once you've got those mastered, you'll be really confident to try any video that you see or any project that you see that's a straight project. And then in the next video, we'll go on to granny squares, which then is a circular motion. And then you'll have everything covered, really, and you can crochet everything for gifts uh, for the rest of your life. <laughs> right. OK, so I just run through the beginning process. Um, which we've already done in the last video, um, just as a little recap so you can get started. So you've got your little slip knot, so that's just where you pull the yarn through the little fishy, and then you put your crochet hook on. And what we're going to be doing is you do need to decide based on the size of the mug that you're doing. So I'm going to do this mug here. So I'm going to do yarn over and pull through to create my chain. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I think it's about the same length as my, or same height as my mug. So I'm just going to check that in a second. So these are just chains to get started. There we go. I reckon that'll make a nice little cosy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a row of double crochet into each of these chains. So I'm just going to skip the first one, which I am going to explain in this video. And then I'm just going to go straight into the next chain, go underneath, pick up the yarn, pull through and then yarn over and pull through. Hopefully this is all feeling a little bit easier on your hands now, now that you've had a little bit of practice. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. Now in most rows of crochet you have to do something special at the end, but this row is the exception. So let's just get to the end, like so. So this is double crochet UK terms or single crochet in American. Oop, just lost my yarn. <laughs> Get that. So in and in. So it's all the way to the end and you can see my little slip knot at the end there. Okay, so I've got a little row of stitches. Now, because we want to make up for the height of the stitch, we need to start building up the sides of the walls. So at the end of the row, I need you to add a yarn over and pull through. So you've basically done a chain on the end. And then I want you to flip your work like a book so that you're working on the back of the work. And you're going to be taking now your stitches from here all the way to the other end. But there is another difference. This time, we're not going into single-sided chains, we're going into stitches. So a stitch has a little V on the top that you'll see here, okay? So you need to count how many Vs you've got. So you're ignoring that little chain that you just built, and you're just gonna do the ones that are attached to this little brick wall that you've created. So I've got a V there, a V, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and then the final one is a little bit lower than all the rest. This is the one that causes lots of problems when people are learning how to crochet. You need to make sure that you identify that final one that's right there just slightly lower than the rest. If you miss that one out you'll end up with a triangle. Okay so remembering we're ignoring that first chain that we built and this time you're going into the stitch so that means going from the front again but making sure that that entire V is on the top of your crochet hook when you go inside. So I've gone into the V, then I'm doing a yarn over, I'm pulling that through, and then I'm going to do a yarn over and pulling it through the two. So the stitch is exactly the same as the one we did previously. The, just the only difference is, is that you need to go under those Vs. So under the V, yarn over at the back, Pulling that through, yarn over, pull through two. Get some more yarn. Always have 
a meter or so of yarn available what you don't want to do is just keep pulling all the time make it nice and comfortable for you so underneath the V pulling the yarn from behind yarn over pull through two like so like so Doo -doo -doo. Now the bit we're going to talk about for a while is the very last stitch. Like I said, it's the thing that took me about six months of crocheting to figure out. And now I've got it. I never make a mistake anymore, which is great. So we're at the last stitch. So we just did the previous one. And then the last one we can see is this little V here. But I actually want us to go in to the space a little bit below it. So if I pull it with my hand, I can see a slightly bigger hole there. That's where I want to go. So I'm just going to go in below that V. All right, so I've got the V on top. Yarn over, pull through and through. Okay, so it ends up straight. Even though it starts lower, it kind of sorts itself out. So don't worry about it, but you really have to look out for that when you're learning. Then we're at the end of a row again. So we're just going to do a yarn over and pull through. So that's our chain. We're going to flip it like a book and then we're off, off again. So I'll do this row a little bit faster. So we're skipping this one. We're going into this row and we're just gonna go all the way along. Okay. Now, as far as the length you need to get to, it's just gonna be as wide as your mug or your plant pot. You just need to keep checking and see how it fits and then you can stop when you get to the right, the right size. I'm just gonna get to the end one more time to demonstrate that difficult bit. And then I'm just going to draw you a little drawing to help you understand what it is I'm talking about. So again, I'm grabbing it with my fingers. I'm looking for a little hole that's below the V. And then I'm inserting the crochet hook there, pulling it through, yarn over, pull through. OK, flipping it like a book. And I'm actually going to treat you to a slightly different stitch now. Um, I feel like it's important that if you join one of my sessions that you know about the half treble crochet. It's quite famously known in Cardiff as Gemma's favourite stitch. I just love it. It's the first one I ever learned and I thought for about a year it was the only stitch that existed and therefore I just always teach people this one and I think it's easier and faster than what we just did. But some people disagree. So I'm going to give you a little, a little special treat of learning the half treble crochet. So. What you do for this one is you do, you need actually two chains at the beginning because it's a little bit taller. And then before you go into that first V, you're going to do a yarn over. So that's just the yarn over exactly the same as we have been doing. So that's the only difference with this stitch. Then you go into the V as normal. Then you pick up the thread. So this time, because you added that extra yarn over, you have three on your hook. Now, when I do my final yarn over, I'm going to pull through all three of those loops. Now, the reason I'm going to show you this is that when I do my little drawing in a second, it'll make a little bit more sense as to why you have to do different things at the beginning and the end of a row. So yarn over before you start your stitch, then going into the V, then picking up the thread, yarn over, pulling through three. And can you see the stitch is considerably bigger? I'm going to whiz to the end. Like I said, the reason I really like this stitch is one, because my hands kind of do it naturally because I did it for a long time thinking it was the only stitch and also because it does grow nice and fast. That extra yarn over makes it almost double the size. So when I get to the end, the hole will be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go yarn over, in, pulling the yarn through, pull through three, and then chaining two because it's taller. Now let me get to pen and paper so I can explain what on earth I'm talking about. This special trick that I seem to have figured out. So you do a slip knot, then you do your chains. I'll keep it nice and simple and I'll just say that we're doing six, something really narrow here, okay? Then what I told you then was to add an extra chain. That extra chain ends up being like the turning chain. So the one that goes up along the side of your little brick walls and that helps build the height. If you didn't add that and you went straight in and did a stitch in that first chain next to it, then you'd end up with these really condensed, really kind of tight stitches. It'd be like a rug. 
So what we're doing is we're building up the height on the sides so that your work is nice and stretched. So when you do that first stitch into that chain, it creates a nice kind of tall stitch. So there we go, all the way along. When you then get to that, the end of that row, you add another chain to make up for the height. And then you go into the space from the previous row and you've got your six stitches continued. If you wanna do a taller stitch, so let me just pretend that what I just did there is where I changed to a half treble crochet. I added two chains because it's a taller stitch. So I need to make sure that I go the extra height to make sure they stand prouder. And then at the end of the row, I add two chains so that again, it goes into the nice tall height. And then what you're looking for when you get to the end of the row is that chain space. So it's important that you go inside there and then your work will be nice and straight along the edges and you won't lose stitches. So hopefully that random little sketch will help you figure out how to make sure that you don't like lose or add stitches when you're creating your first piece of work. So here's one I prepared earlier. We're gonna turn this into the mug cozy now. So you'll see this was where I started with my slip knot. I did, I think it was about 12 stitches. I've gone back and forth, back and forth, lots and lots and lots of times. And here I am at the end of the row. I'm happy that it fits my mug nicely and I'm ready to assemble it. So all I'm gonna do on the final row is I'm just gonna do my one chain as normal. And then I'm gonna start doing some stitches along. One, two, three. You can do as many little uh, buttonholes as you want. I'm just trying to find the middle of mine. Four, I think it's this one, here we go. So I'm going to pause there and I'm going to make a little loop that the button can go into. So I'm just going to do some chains in the middle of a row there. So yarn over and it depends on the size of your button. You just need to keep going until you think it would fit neatly around the button that you've chosen. I've gone for this nice vivid yellow one. So I think it needs about eight or nine chains to fit around it comfortably. There we go. And I'm happy that the length is gonna be enough for the button. I'm just gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna insert my crochet hook under the two loops at the bottom so it's nice and secure. I'm gonna grab my yarn from behind and drag it all the way through. So now I've got a nice little buttonhole. Off I go again, I just need to finish the row. So I'm just gonna do that with normal stitches. One, two, three, four, and five to the end, that's it. All right, and then finishing off your work, just need a pair of scissors, cut off about 15 to 20 centimeters more than you need, because we're gonna weave that in afterwards so it's nice and secure. But we can finish it off with a knot for now, so you just do yarn over and pull this one all the way through, like so. All right, that's nice and secure. Then to weave in, you can take um, a small needle, or you can just do it with your hands, is you can just take it on a little mystery journey so that it's kind of woven amongst the work. I'm just going to use a crochet hook to help. So I'm just going to pull it through and take it on a little mystery journey. Like so. Like I said, you could do this with a small needle if you had one, or like, like a darning needle. So I'm just picking that up, pulling it through. Like so. When I've done that a few times, I'm then going to cut it so that it's kind of lost amongst my work there. The final stage is then to attach my button. I'm just using a random little bit of elastic that I had in my box of, box of, box of crafts, but you could use some thread, a bit more wool, anything really. So I'm just gonna pop it through. I'm actually just gonna attach the button first, so make the design on the top just to keep everything simple for myself. So here you go, I'm just putting it, pretending to secure it there so I've just got two ends at the back and then I'm going to place it in the middle so it's the opposite side to the loop go in one hole go in another like so flip it over to the back do a nice secure double knot 
like so. I'm just going to weave this end in as well and cut it off so it's a finished product. Weaving in is, no is notoriously everyone's least favourite part. You get all excited, you finish your work and then you've got to spend hours weaving in but it is quite important obviously. So there we go, got it all finished off and then finally we're just going to wrap this around our cup. We're going to pop the button inside the loop and then we're going to gift it to someone and they're going to be super happy and then they're going to ask you to make more. All right, so keep practicing those, keep getting those straight lines. Um, some will go a little bit wrong, but don't worry too much. I think that's part of the learning process with crochet. It definitely takes a little bit of perseverance. And then when you feel confident, join me again for the next video when I'll teach you how to do granny squares and then how to turn them into beautiful homeware and clothing items. See you soon.